Hey y'all, I hope you are doing well and making through this quarantine as best you can. I'm getting a lot of questions these days about finances, everything from budgeting without steady income, unemployment compensation, to whether we should invest in the current market. And I see a lot of you having these conversations on social media as well. And so I just want to hop on here and let you in on a little secret when it comes to finances. Now, we all know the importance of budgeting. Every great financial guru, guru makes it one of their first steps. It's in Dave Ramsey's baby steps. And yet, while it's not complicated, it is so difficult for us to come to that conversation about budgeting. All of us know we should do it, but only 33% of us actually do. And when we have that conversation of budgeting, this is usually what I hear. Someone says, well, I'm a spender. So I'm addicted to spending. Or actually, it's usually if I'm sitting down with a couple, they're going to say that about each other. My husband, my wife, they're just addicted to spending. And that's why we can't balance our budget. I want to let you in on a little secret. And it's this. Nobody is addicted to spending. No one. No one's addicted to spending. Even if you're a spender, you're not addicted to spending. No one's running around begging for an opportunity to spend money, just throwing cash around. Nobody is saying that they get high off of swiping a credit card. There's no feeling like when I swipe a credit card. See, if we were addicted to spending, then we wouldn't have any debt because we would be throwing that money around so much, we have all our bills paid off. So then why is it so difficult to balance that budget? Well, it's not spending that we're addicted to. The question becomes, what are we spending our money on? See, I generally see this in two categories. The first category I like to call stuff spenders. And I'm using the term stuff fairly liberally here. It could be stuff like material goods. It could be experiences like eating out or going to concerts. Stuff spenders. These are people who have a better term, addicted to stuff. If you're, if you're a stuff spender, you like stuff. You like going to Target because you like buying stuff. You might not need it. You just like stuff. Then there's another group, and I like to call this group convenience spenders. And I'm in this group. We don't particularly like stuff per se. Sure, we enjoy it and we'll enjoy a good experience, but it's hard for us to not be addicted to convenience. So for me, I have coffee at my house and I might not even be feeling caffeine. But if I drive by a Wawa and I see the parking lot isn't that full, I suddenly have a craving for caffeine. And not just any caffeine, for Wawa coffee. And guess what? My car is going to pull in and I'm going to get that Wawa coffee. I hear people say, well, there's a Starbucks in the basement of my office and I don't even like Starbucks coffee. I said, well, why don't you go to the coffee shop around the block that has dollar coffee? Well, it, it's around the block and Starbucks in the basement of my office. And so for convenience, we'll spend five times the amount of money on something that we don't really necessarily need or even want. And if that's you, you're a convenience spender. See, it's so important to know what group you're in when we begin to talk about the budget. Because it's not about knowing how much money you spend. It's about knowing where that money's going and why you're spending that money. And there's not a better time to ask what group you're in than right now. See, if you're a stuff spender, you're still seeing that show up on your credit card bills because you're surfing Target.com or you're surfing Magnolia. And if Joanna Gaines has it, you have to have it too. So you're clicking and clicking and clicking. Add to cart has become therapy, not because you love swiping the credit card, but because you love the stuff. And if you're a convenience spender like me, you suddenly realize that your statements are fairly stable. And it's crazy because we're still paying our bills, right? The electric is still being paid, water is still being paid for, and yet it seems like we have more money than before. Well, for a lot of us, we're not driving to the office anymore, which means we're not passing Wawa. We're not having a Starbucks in the basement of our office. I mean, unless you have a Starbucks in the basement of your house. And so suddenly the spending has slowed down or even come to a complete stop. 
by looking at your spending habits now in the middle of this crazy, crazy season, you can get a better grasp for what you spend your money on and why you spend your money. So take some time to self-reflect. And when this is all over, revisit that process. And I think you're going to see that you see the situation in a whole new light. I hope this is helpful, and I hope it helps you get on your way to financial peace.